everybody. I'm um, just uh, welcoming you back. Uh, we are going into our bird project, which is the one you guys voted on. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a couple different types of backgrounds. Um, so you can kind of apply in uh, a couple techniques. You can pick which one you want. Um, this is a bird I did uh, a couple weeks ago just because I was bored. And I did it in funky colors just because I felt like it. It's not a bird that actually exists. I just felt like being bright and colorful. I had a new palette with some really fun colors. I only used about five of the colors in this palette, but I wanted to use these really bright colors and see what would happen. Anyways, um, I'm going to show you the first thing is how to take the sketch that I put into your haiku lessons, how to take that sketch and transfer it to some watercolor or thicker paper because uh, copy paper will just kind of disintegrate and it'll kind of get all warped and crazy on you. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a couple things. Um, so there's this one. There's this one that I'm going to use some techniques on to show you. Um, this is uh, from this reference photo right here, but I changed the backgrounds. Um, and so I'm just showing you how you can take one sketch, but you can get multiple types of birds out of that sketch. But first of all, we have what I sent you guys. This is our next two projects. We're going to be using uh, this sheet you just printed out. This bottom section is what we're using today. We'll do the cupcake another day. You can tell the sketches aren't like something amazing or stellar. It doesn't need to be. Um, and so I'm going to show you a few ways that you can do your thing. One of the ways that uh, some of you have done in my class before, um, I, I do require you guys to take... Uh, drawing. So you guys are supposed to be taking drawing with the drawing instructor or uh, Mr. Stewart and uh, and he's going to teach you all those skills. Now we have a big variety of ages and um, levels that people are at and so I, I because I'd rather have you painting than um, not doing it all because you're frustrated with the drawing, I did send this out that you guys can download. So when you're trying to do a transfer um, one of the ways you can do it is I'm going to show you with the light, but you tape your watercolor paper lightly with a little tiny piece of masking tape to hold it in place, and you can go up to a window, and when you put it up to a window, unless it's nighttime, this won't work then, um, what will happen is, I'm going to try to angle my light right here, is you will be able to see your drawing, okay? So I think you can kind of see that. Um, I know it's kind of hard because the angles of my camera and everything. Um, but you can kind of see it. So then you hold it there on the window. You've got it taped so it shouldn't move around on you. And you trace in lightly with pencil. Do not go dark. If you are noticing that when you're tracing something with your pencil, and it, if you consistently draw and your pencil comes out very dark and heavy-handed, then one of the things I'm going to suggest for you to do is, let me get the light out of your face, um, is easily just move your finger back on the pencil. Normally we're pressing and whenever I come up to my students they are holding their hand and their fingertips so close to the end and it creates a lot of pressure. So if you take your hand back it releases and, and lightens up the pressure that you're putting on the lead and it helps you sketch lightly. So definitely move your hand back pay attention because the more erasing you actually have to do, you don't want to have to do a lot of erasing. When you erase a lot on watercolor paper, it actually removes some of the sizing. The sizing is what's keeping that paper together so that as you put on these multiple washes, it's not turning into fuzz and disintegrating on you. Another way is to create your own graphite paper, and that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, and so some artists, like, they have a stash of graphite paper, and that's pretty much kind of like a copy or transfer paper. But you don't have to spend money on it. You just need a pencil and your drawing. So what I did here is I have my sketch that I printed out, and then I came and turned it over, and then wherever the lines for my sketch were, I took my pencil and laid the lead flat. So don't go like this, lay it flat. You can kind of hold your finger over it, kind of like when you're a kid and you color with the side of your crayon, just like that. And I just went over it. I did it in a medium to dark, went over the whole thing, just made sure that all the parts where I've drawn have the lead. Then you very carefully and gently line it up on your paper so you've got it where you know you want the actual drawing to show up. And then just try your best not 
to, and again, I got two little pieces of masking tape to kind of hold it in place. You want to try your best to not um, put pressure on this except for with a pen. And what I do is I get a ballpoint pen. This is uh, actually when it's printed out. It came out in black and white. So now I'm going to take this turquoise pen or a red pen or a blue pen, a ballpoint pen works great, and I'm going to trace over it. And so the cool thing is, is two things happen with the pen. One, it's not too heavy for the paper. It's not going to press through your copy paper. That's important. And two, because it's a different color than my actual uh, printout, I can tell if I've sketched there or not. Now I've actually done this twice. I did a earlier video and my phone uh, got all wonky and erased it. So I'm doing this video all over again. So that's why you you can kind of see the outline of the blue already there. But what the cool thing is, is it gives you a really quick way to get your sketch in. And again, I think I forgot maybe a little bit, but try not to lean on your drawing. The more you lean on your drawing, then that pressure will put some of that graphite down onto it. Now, you don't need to press particularly hard if you got enough pencil down, pencil lead, graphite. And then you don't have to push too hard. But I'm pushing a little harder than normal, and the reason for that is just because I want you guys to be able to see it. If I was doing it as light as I normally would, then you wouldn't be able to see it on the video. Now the cool thing about this is that you'll be able to erase if you don't like it. Um, you can change the shape of this bird. You can easily take this bird and make it into a cardinal. You can, they have like the tufted heads, the red birds. Um, you could easily make it into a chickadee, which I showed you earlier, my chickadee drawing. Um, you could change it into a lot of different birds. Bluebird, kind of like whatever you want. So if I was gonna make this into a chickadee, I would round that out. Because if I look at my chickadee picture, his head comes back like this. This one dodges in. Now the good news is, is that once you uh, get done with uh, your pen, you can hold this side down, keep one side of your tape connected, and then you can pick it up and find your sketch underneath. And also, the reason we're keeping that tape there on the other side is because you can catch if you miss something. So if I miss part of the leg, I would lay it back down, tape it, grab my ballpoint pen, um, sketch it out on there, get my leg locked in, double check again, make sure I got all my pieces, my eyes, my beak, all of that, and then I am good to go. So. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to have special graphite paper. You guys have all the tools you need right in your hand, at, right at home. And so I look forward to seeing your sketches. And I will be right back as we get started on this actual painting. All right. Mm -hmm. 